Higher end kitchen gadgets. Absolutely. Cool. I know where I am. And then rolling. Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Now, thanks to all of your suggestions and us scouring the internet for the latest high-end kitchen products, we've got a lovely range to review. And to be absolutely clear, this is not a sponsored video. We bought all of these products ourselves with our own money because we found them intriguing. We also kept the receipts to see if they're any good. You ready to lift the cloche on number one? Ooh. He instantly thought hairdryer. I felt, uh, straight away, I recognised the brand. Sage. We featured them Sage. many times. Sage. What? No. Sage. Sage. <laughs> <laughs> it, feels, it feels like a drill. Mm. But with a... Is this from Eber's personal collection? It might be the end of this. No, not the end of that. I mean at the end of this video. I might take it home and it might become <laughs> part of my personal collection. Oh! <laughs> Is it a smoke gun? Straight off the bat. Oh! This guy knows his smoking. The Sage by Heston Blumenthal Smoking Gun lets you infuse food and drinks with unique smoky flavours. There are virtually no other methods that allow you to make such a big change to the flavours of hot and cold foods so easily. Use a smoking gun with a small or large glass cloche for exciting tableside theatre. Some wood chips, applewood and hickory. Hickory, in a way of posh. Hickory dickory dot. Pop and click the mesh bucket in to the top of the machine. Sprinkle in a little of the hickory smoke. Arguably, there is no better way to add bold flavour to both hot and cold food. And the fact that it is cold smoke, it doesn't affect the food you're smoking other than to add a smoky flavour. Light it with the pump going and see if it smokes stuff. So as you turn it on, the em it starts to ember and smoke straight away is puffing out the end. What does that smell like? Can you smell the flavour? <laughs> <laughs> can I? You can pretty much smoke anything, but it's going to be cold smoke. Cheese, great suggestion. We've got something a little bit different for you to try. Would you like to try and smoke some cream? Is that, is that, okay, fine. Oh, it's like a cat. I can't tell if it's in the cream or on the cream, but it's there. So I've presented something that might replicate the dining theatrics. Wow. Ebers, what on earth is that that you've smoked? <laughs> what is I mean, that? I ask that a lot, but <laughs> what in particular? <laughs> Are they more wood chips on top? That is a nice little scallop dish that we have smoked with a celeriac remoulade. What? What? And I've topped it off with some crispy tortilla, a little hack from uh, one of our meal packs. Uh, it's a nice way of adding texture to something. Imagine hay smoked, or in this case, applewood smoked scallop. Amazing, amazing. So one of the applications for this gun is that once food is pretty much prepared and good to go, you can add the smoke to get that final finishing flourish that provides the experience at the table. It's a hint of smoke. Like, I'm not being smacked in the face by it at all. Um, it's really nice. And it, you know what? I can't work out if I'm tasting it or if I'm just smelling it from what's around me. But it adds to the, adds to the experience. I think what's interesting is there's two options. There's what you smoke and what you smoke it with. So bearing in mind you could put tea leaves, hay, herbs, spices, or wood chips into this. You can add a lot of different smoke and nuance into that unveil. But what you smoke is pretty much limitless. Would you like to try an Ebers special? Smoke me, Ebers. Whoa! Fill it with smoke? <laughs> this is to allow you to have the cloche dining experience as well, but actually, we use the smoke cream. So the smoke essence should be all the way through this. This is our tiramisu from Can't Be Asked to Cook Too. I think it could be really cool even in things like cocktails as well, because you can smoke liquids as well as you can smoke fats and, and salt. There's so many things you could do with it. It's really that there's such a light, delicate note. Still tastes of a beautiful tiramisu, but just with a little ambiance. So let's talk price. Yeah. How much do you think we paid for this device? 50 quid? 80 pounds. Pretty good going on the guesswork. 79 quid. 
That was really well good. Done. Okay. It works and it does a good job, but it's probably a little bit more than I would pay for it. So useful or not? It's very, very good. And I would like to keep it. I've been on a journey. Um, I'm gonna say that's useful. We really need bigger cloches. Oh, 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 is this one of those ones that's either the name of an orange or mandolin? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, so I can put my stuff in there and I can swipe it. This is a beechwood three blade cabbage slicer. If you are a sauerkraut enthusiast, this is for you. Did you make it? I'd expect it to be well finished. I'd expect it to be sanded down, to be varnished, to be a thing of beauty. If you're making sauerkraut, because of the time it takes, I suggest you make quite a lot of it. Do it in one big batch and it lasts you forever. And you do it when cabbages are in season and then you've got sauerkraut for the year. So you want something that cuts it quite quickly and efficiently because doing it by hand is strenuous. The blades are very sharp. It's cutting, it's cutting very finely. It's wafer thin. Could you have done that by hand? I could not have done that by hand. Does all the leaves and even the firm kind of stalky stemmy bit, which means you get no wastage. You can literally push the whole cabbage through that and because it is so fine in the way it grates it, because of its three blade action, job done. Would you like to make some sauerkraut anyway? Have we got a week? Well, yeah, good point. <laughs> or longer. <laughs> the process is very simple. Uh, essentially, you're preserving the cabbage, and to do that, you need to put it into an environment where the nasty pathogens can't live and survive. So, 2% salt will do that. And now, get your hands involved, and just kind of mix it all up and scrunch it all up until water comes out. And really scrunch it, scrunch it, scrunch it. And squeeze it. And what you're gonna want is the good bacteria will survive in that, and begin to ferment and eat the natural sugars from the cabbage. Once you've got loads of liquid out of it, you season it traditionally with caraway seeds, maybe some black pepper, but you can really sort of play with those seasonings. And then you're gonna put it into your jar. We just demonstrated with a tiny, tiny little jar here, but put it all in there, including all of its liquid. So you basically wanna make sure that all the liquid is covering it because that's essentially going to ensure that it kills all the bad bacteria and the pathogens. If you're gonna seal it up, you need to burp it every so often by opening it and letting all the air out and then trapping it again. Or you just leave it unsealed. And this is the thing that's weird. You just leave it at room temperature for about 10 days. You are gonna eat some yes. of Ebba's sauerkraut. Oh, there's a sentence. I'll sort you out a sausage as well. There you go, Baz. German mustard. Bratwurst oh, and my homemade sauerkraut, which has got fennel seed, black pepper, and juniper. Ooh, a whole jar of it. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Took about 10 or no, maybe 11 or 12 days to get to the sourness I wanted. It's very tasty. It's, um, that is far less sour than the one that I've got at home, actually. The one I've got at home, you have a tiny bit of it, and it's really stringy, long stringy stuff. Oh, there it is. I'm guessing. You didn't use this though, to make that? No, I did it by hand. A bit, bit chunky. If I was making sauerkraut on the regs and I was doing it for like homebrew or selling it or whatever it was, then I would want a quick and easy way to slice up my cabbage and I think that would be really useful. So it doesn't feel like a thing for normals? It feels like a thing for hobbyists? Yeah. Would you like to guess the price? So for a reference point, um, one of Amazon's most popular and highly rated mandolins, finished in black plastic, but obviously with a metal blade, one blade, sells for about £28. £37.50. Let's go for £40. £29.99. Okay. Is it really? Okay. Question is, is it useful or not? It's not for me. For the right person, this is useful. For me, not so much. Okay, Barry, we've touched a little something under your nose. <laughs> I've been touched to look. Ta-da! Ah. Oh. It looks like it's just missing the cow. <laughs> what gin, rum, vodka? That is an awfully big glass bottle for tequila. What, you put pods? No. This is the Bartesian machine and it makes 
on-demand bar quality cocktails, an effortless way to serve and enjoy premium cocktails at home. Oh, wow, okay. It's delivered with a little bit of class. We have purchased very, particularly the old fashioned set of capsules for you to test today, mate. Excellent. I do enjoy an old fashioned. Right, Baz, you have Cosmopolitan capsules. We provided you with the recommended vodka, 50 cents very own. <laughs> I'm skeptical, but I'm intrigued. You've got a gin and rum, vodka, tequila and whiskey vessel. Fill it, stick them in, fill the reservoir with water, then add your capsule and you're good to go. On the top of each capsule, there's a barcode, which the machine will read and then make sure that the correct measures are used. I'll stick to regular, tempted by light. But, uh... <laughs> we'll go regular now and then later we'll go. And mix. When complete, shake, strain, and enjoy your drink. Whiskey's bubbling. Oh, look at that. That tastes to me like it's uh, been made with a sugar syrup rather than with a sugar cube and water because it's thicker, it's more viscous as a whole drink. It's delicious. I like it. It tastes very cranberry and citrusy. Am I fussed by how good of a drink it can make? Probably not. I think I'm buying something like that for the convenience. Without having to remember the recipes. Things like margarita, Long Island iced tea, uh, gimblets, negronis, old fashions, cosmopolitans. Can I try the strong Yeah, absolutely, to see yeah, do it. If, it puts more, <laughs> if that puts more bourbon in. Is it close, passable, or miles away from what you'd expect? Passable. If I wanted a quick fix of an old fashioned, that would do the job. That in your living room, on top of your glassware, oh, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? The problem with cocktails is having to buy all of the different ingredients to make a cocktail. I think where this excels is exactly that, when you want to make different cocktails in one glass one after the other. I don't need one, but I really, really want one. <laughs> Smart looking product. It's been featured by Forbes, The Food Network, Oprah loves it. It's been very well received. How much do you think it is? 199 pounds. Six handy. So once we converted the price from dollars to pounds, it comes in at around 300 pounds, excluding delivery. Oh. And the pods are then two or three dollars each, depending on what bulk you buy them in, and you can get those in the subscription. If you were to part with 300 pounds, I think you'd be happy because it's premium, it's solid, it's quite high tech, and it does the job. If you're willing and in a position to part with 300 pounds, good for you, have it and enjoy it, because I really want one. That's so expensive, it, because it's unnecessary. That's the standout gift. That's like your 21st birthday. Well, over to you guys. Which of those gadgets caught your eye and would you splash the cash on any of them? Comment down below. And as always, also comment down below with other gadgets you see that we should review next time. Or of course, let us know over on Twitter using the hashtag sorted gadgets. It's not useful. It's absolutely useful. One, one, one less you want to No, 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 he's out. That. He's out. We're out. We're out. We're out. <laughs> Our new cookbook, The Ultimate Cooking Battles Normals Edition, features 57 show-stopping, jaw-dropping, gauntlet-laying dishes that will impress even the most tyrannical of judges. And they're written specifically for normals like you and me. So there's a range of easier dishes, right up to colossal yet still achievable project cooks. We're running a limited pre-sale right now, so Sorted members, you can guarantee yourselves a copy. If you aren't a member, you can sign up for free and then guarantee yourselves a copy. Find out everything in the description box below. The people who provide my water are called Thames Water. Yeah. So when I drink water, I think this is Thames Water. <laughs> and then I think, I hope it's not Thames Water because that's green. <laughs> Sorry.